Hey guys, it is Misty from The Book Rat, and it is time for my April Rewind. So this is a look back at what I read in April with a thumbs up, thumbs down, and a little bit on why. And sorry if it's a noisy video, but apparently everyone in my neighborhood has decided to mow their grass today. So as many of you probably know, April was fairy tale fortnight month, which means the first two weeks of April were completely taken up by a fairy tale blog event, which normally means I'm not going to get much reading done. And I said in my April TBR that I probably had a way over ambitious stack, and that I didn't know what I was thinking. But it worked out for me, because I actually read every single thing that was in my stack except for one book. It was kind of more of a conscious decision not to read it yet because it doesn't come out until July. And that book was Silver in the Blood by Jessica Day George. I did start it and I had wanted to review it for Fairy Tale Fortnite, but it, there came a point when it was getting really close to the end and I didn't want my reading of the book or the review of the book to be rushed and it to suffer. So since it was coming out so much later, I decided instead to just do a little bit of a teaser and a bit of a first impressions and save the actual reading and reviewing until closer to the date that it comes out. So this is the only thing that didn't get read and it will be popping up again in a TBR very soon. But everything else in my stack, I actually made it through. I don't know how. So we'll start with the fairy tale Fortnite related books. The first two were ones that I had started in March and was just finishing up this month. And the first of them is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I will leave a link below to my review of this, but it was basically a very, very glowing one. Huge thumbs up. I loved this. Partly I think it was the right book at the right time. It was something that I just needed. But also it's a very engaging style. Really just draws you in. I can't wait for the second book, and this is the first book in a long time that I have gone to bed at night reading and immediately picked up again in the morning, and I, I really needed that. I think this probably has a lot to do with why I was able to get so much reading done in April, because when I have a book like that that really gets me enthused and that makes me want to keep reading, it spills over after the book is done. So I still am kind of on that streak and will fly through other things as a result. So. Thank you, Sarah J. Moss. Loved it. The other book that I had to finish up is Beast Keeper by Kat Hellison, and I don't know where I put it. <laughs> I don't know. I will leave my link to the review for that as well. Um, but again, thumbs up. This was a retelling of sorts of Beauty and the Beast, but it was kind of gender flipped. I mean, that's just basically guaranteed to kind of win me over. I did like it, and it's something that I think I will probably reread at a later date, which is also something that I said about When the Sea is Rising Red, which was Kat's first book. Both of them I felt like they were unique and they gave me something different and something I wasn't expecting and that I would probably get more out of them based on future rereads. But that said, they both had something that kind of left me a little wanting. So in this case, in the case of Beastkeeper, I loved the build up to it and I loved the sort of dark middle grade feel that it had and the gender swap that was going on. I love the main character and getting to see her be beastly. I really wish that would have been a longer part, but towards the end it started to feel a little rushed and maybe a little less... I don't really know how to describe it, just a little less, I guess, um, compared to the first part of the book, first three quarters or so. The ending just didn't feel the same. It's weird because I feel like when I try to talk about the things that I didn't love about the book, it will give the impression that I just didn't love the book. And that's not necessarily the case. I did actually really like it, but it just had these things that I want to talk about and these things that kind of bothered me. So click through and read my review for more on that because it, I just end up rambling when I tried to talk about it. And I think I was maybe marginally clearer in the review, but I did like it. Thumbs up, but just a little cautious thumbs up. And the last fairy tale Fortnite read of the batch was Hold Me Like a Breath by Tiffany Schmidt, which was an ebook. And I really don't want to have to grab my phone to show you because it's across the room and I'm surrounded by things. So, <laughs> this was a retelling of The Princess and the Pea centered around crime families. It kind of ends up being a little bit of a mixed bag with me. So, the actual retelling aspects, the way it took on The Princess and the Pea and made that really bizarre tale actually work. It was very, very clever. The crime aspects I also liked. It kind of reminded me of the Birthright series by Gabrielle Zevin, which a lot of you know I love. There were things that I really did enjoy about it, 
and that made me curious to read the next book in the series. It also did grief remarkably well, I would say. Um, especially early on to not really be connected to characters yet and to still really, really feel for them and to grieve for them is impressive. So I thought that she handled that really well and made it very authentic and believable and painful to read. But all that said, there came a point, maybe a third of the way through or half of the way through, where things just kind of changed. It took this total different path, not for the better. So I had a lot of issues with this, and I know there are people that have had even bigger issues with it than I have. I still enjoyed it. But the way things kind of play out and how convenient and over the top and out of left field they are really bothered me and I think kind of undermined the really strong story that she'd built until that point. So when you have these serious things going on and you have someone that is not only very very ill and very very fragile but also is basically on the run and in hiding fearing for her life to not only blindly trust but to immediately love a complete stranger and to not pick up on any weirdness and at just the whole insta-lovey aspect that's always a negative, but in this it was really bizarre. There were a lot of things that just kind of fell apart for me at the end of that. And there were also kind of some things that were just unforgivable, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Just, just not okay. Not good, not good decision making from a storytelling standpoint or from a character's <laughs> decision making standpoint. Just things that really didn't work for me. Again, I will link to my review below so you can kind of see more about those things if you're interested. I don't want to give spoilers here just for those of you who are still interested and curious about the book and want to read it, but if you want to know the things that really did bother me and that just kind of really were a thorn in my side, click over to that review and I uh, talk about them more there. But that was all for Fairy Tale Fortnite. The next thing I read was Scandal by Lindsay Smith, which is the sequel to Secret, which is hard to say. Sequel to Secret. Sequel to Secret. And because I am giving this its own full video review, I'm not going to talk about it much here, other than to say I liked it. And if you want to know more on why, make sure to check out that review video. Then I picked up April's Wednesday Way book club pick, which was The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. And I mentioned that I was a little bit hesitant on this one. I um, really wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I wasn't a fan of Shiver. I've heard good things about this, and I've heard good things about Scorpio races, which I also have, so it's not that I wasn't going to give Steve Otter any more chances. I was still going to try her, but it just made me a little leery. <laughs> and because of the way my month has gone, I basically ended up reading this the day of the chat. I didn't mean to do that. I shouldn't have done that to myself. That could have really backfired. Fortunately for me, <laughs> I did like it! And it really is a testament to it that I was able to marathon read it and basically be unable to put it down for an entire day and not hate it. If it had really had anything that was pet peevy about it, I would have had to put it to the side and just been like, couldn't do it guys, in the chat and just would have had to give up. So the fact that I was able to read it for many hours consecutively and not only not hate it but still enjoy it means that I probably would have even loved it more if I had read it at a normal person's pace. <laughs> I like the sort of quest for the grail aspect, the mythology that's built in the world, and I like the main character, Blue, and even all the peripheral characters. And that's something that really meant a lot, because my big complaint about Shiver was that I thought the characters, other than Sam, I think his name was, were really, really wooden, just flat, non-dynamic characters. So to have a lot of characters, and this is a fairly big cast, that I actually liked and felt like they were fleshed out and not cardboard meant something that was really good. So that made me happy and I'm really curious to see where Dream Thieves goes, especially after the way this one ends. So pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by this one. And if you want to know more about how I felt about that, um, I will leave a link to the live show that we did the discussion for The Raven Boys so you can see more about what we thought about it. I liked it, Liz was not a huge fan. so. It's an interesting back and forth, so you can check that out below if you'd like. And then, because I'm crazy, <laughs> the last day of the month, I decided I was going to finish the remaining books that I still needed to read. So I went ahead and read Lying Out Loud by Cody Keplinger, which is a companion novel to The Duff, and as expected, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm becoming a very confirmed fan of Keplinger's style and the way she just kind of draws people in and pulls you along, and the humor that she's able to work into the stories. She still takes on more serious things and weighty topics and human interaction, but 
in a very relatable and not heavy-handed way, which is nice. This had the surprise bonus of being a bit of a retelling of Cyrano de Bergerac, which I love, and I didn't know that it was going to be. Um, my copy doesn't tell me what it's about, so I went into this kind of blind. Picking up very, very quickly early on that it was a Cyrano retelling made me very happy, and I thought that it pulled it off well, so good modern take on that story. And again, if you're a fan of Cody's, you will probably enjoy this. I certainly did. And the very last thing I read this month was Exquisite Corpse, which is a graphic novel. Um, just recently translated from the French, I believe. And from me, it gets a thumbs up, <laughs> but, uh, a, 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 one, but one that I think I probably have to explain a little bit. So I quite liked this. I didn't know that I was going to in the beginning. I was thinking, might not like this so much. The characters are not the most likable people that you want to shake a little bit so i was thinking maybe i wasn't gonna like this but <laughs> i did in spite of that it's something that i think could maybe really be divisive and that people are either going to like it and appreciate the way it ends and be kind of like take it at face value and just kind of laugh or people are going to be really bothered by these characters by the way things turn out and just really dissatisfied or even angry at it so it's an interesting little story. Definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but if you can read things kind of cynically and darkly humorous, not want to rip your hair out at characters with not a lot of redeeming qualities to them, then you'll probably like this. But if those things bother you, you probably want to skip it. And that is what I read in April, so a pretty good stack, all things considered. Definitely better than I thought I was going to be able to do, so yay for that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you agree or disagree or just what you thought in general and feel free to share any highlights or lowlights of your April reading stack. My May TBR is up now so you can check that out if you're curious what I'm reading in May. And as I said, there will also be a full review of Scandal by Lindsay Smith, so make sure to check that out too. But that is all for now. As always, thanks for watching and happy reading!